In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two explosion problems that relate to the conservation of momentum. So our first one is going to be over here on the left. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit more simple than the first one, or excuse me, the second one. And the second one is going to be slightly more complicated because it involves um, an, another angle in the initial explosion. So with the conservation of momentum, we're going to say that the total momentum of everything before the collision is equal to everything after the collision. So initially, if this is all pieced together and everything is at rest, then the total momentum, we'll call it PT, equals zero kilogram meters per second. Which means that afterwards, when we add up the momenta of all the objects, we want it to equal zero. Now, how is it going to do that? <clears throat> we want, we're going to have a combination of positive and negative momenta, and that is going to sum up to zero. So we want to make sure that we are clear on our directions. So we'll say that everything up is positive, everything down is negative, and then we'll also say anything to the right is positive and anything to the left is negative. So we're going to go ahead and analyze this first one. And what we have is one um, object that's going upwards. If we just do a simple m times v, then it has a momentum upwards of 25 kilogram meters per second. I'll save myself a little room and I won't add the units in. And then to the left, I have eight times six. So we have 48 kilogram meters per second to the left. So we'll call this positive and this one negative. Now we know that we want um, two different momentum vectors that are going to cancel this one out or both of these out because we know that the sum is zero so we're going to want one that is negative 25 and one that is positive 48. so what we're going to do is we're going to piece these together using the tip to tail method and we're going to have a momentum vector that goes down 25 and then goes over 48. And then the resultant vector is going to be our answer. Um, that's going to give us our final momentum of our green little rock over here. Um, and then we can go ahead and find the velocity from there. And then we can also find this angle as well. So if we just use the Pythagorean theorem, um, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Then we have 25 squared plus 48 squared. Square root that. And that's going to give us our hypotenuse of the triangle, which comes out to 54.12. All right, so now we have our final momentum of our green object. So if we take that final momentum of 54. 0.12 and set it equal to m times v. The m is 7 kilograms. And the v is our unknown. We can go ahead and divide both sides by 7. And then we have our final velocity. That final velocity equals 7.93. In addition, we're going to go ahead and find this angle, which we'll call theta, so we can find out exactly which direction it's going. So if we go ahead and do the inverse tangent of this angle, we do inverse tangent so we can do the opposite and then the adjacent. So the inverse tangent of 48 over 25, and that gives us our angle of 62.49 degrees. Okay, so that would be... this angle right over here. That's where the, the theta would be. But if you wanted the angle below the horizontal, which would be this angle over here, um, it would just be the complement of 62.49, which would be 27.51 degrees. So depending on what angle you're looking for, um, you may want to use a 62.49 or the 27.51. All right, now for our second one, um, it's going to be very similar, 
we have a total momentum of zero to start off with, and then our thing explodes into a few different pieces. So again, we have um, the momentum of our um, red rock over here. So let's go ahead and, and split this screen so we don't get our numbers mixed up. So we have 48 going this way, and that's in the negative direction. So again, we'll call that negative 48. And then we have this um, blue component over here that's on an angle. So what we can do is we can take um, 5 times 5, which is 25. So what we're going to do is we want to break up the 25 into the horizontal and vertical component. So if we take the cosine of 30 degrees, because that's our angle, um, we take the cosine of 30 degrees and we multiply it by 25, we get the horizontal component, which is 21.65. And then if we take sine of 30 degrees and we multiply it by 25, then we get 12.5. So now we have a bunch of different components. Um, as of now, we don't need to look at this 25 anymore because it's represented by these two components, the horizontal and vertical component. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna do the same thing we did in the previous one. We know that our total momentum for the whole entire system was zero to start off with before it exploded. And now we basically wanna take all of these momentum vectors and bring the horizontal component to zero and the vertical component to zero. So we know if we have 12.5 going upwards, we're gonna want negative 12.5 going downwards. And then if we sum up these two uh, momentum vectors, we're gonna get negative 26.35. So to cancel that out to make it zero, we're gonna want positive 26.35. So I'm going to go ahead and write this, uh, rewrite it um, off to the side, and we're going to connect these tip to tail as usual. And we're going to slide this momentum vector 26.35 to the right, and then we're going to drop it down 12.5, or if you want to call that negative. And then our resultant vector is going to be the hypotenuse of this triangle. And then again, we can go ahead and find an angle over here as well. So if we use Pythagorean theorem, just like we did over here and square our two sides and then square root them, we get our final side, which is 29.16. Okay, that is the momentum of our seven kilogram object. So if we take 29.16 and then set it equal to mass times velocity, we can go ahead and divide both sides by seven. And then our velocity comes out to 4.17 meters per second. Okay, and again, if we wanted that angle, we can go ahead and use the inverse of tangent, or we can use basically any one because we have all different sides of the triangle, but I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, the inverse of tangent. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take our opposite end and I'll just take the magnitude of it, 12.5, divided by the adjacent end. The adjacent end is right here in orange, 26.35. And then our theta comes out to 25.38 degrees. Okay. Um, so to sum things up, um, with these explosion type problems, they could be moving, but typically we're talking about something that's at rest, which means that the total momentum of the entire system is zero, which means the total momentum afterwards is also going to be zero according to the conservation of momentum. So you take a look at all of the momentum that it currently has from the known objects, such as the red one and the blue one, and then you find the opposites of those that's going to bring it to zero, and then if it is on an angle, which most likely it will, according to these types of drawings, you're going to piece it together like this, the couple different vectors in the tip to tail method. And then your resultant vector is going to be the hypotenuse of your triangle, where you can find the momentum and velocity, and then eventually the angles as well, using something like an inverse um, tangent. Um, you could use an inverse sine or cosine as well. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and solve an explosion problem. Thank you for watching and listening.